Hi everyone, this is Mehul Mathan. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So if in case you are planning to pursue your master's in quantitative finance from UK, this video is for you. So if you have not seen my video in which I have basically created one more video, which is for master's in quantitative finance or financial engineering from USA, I would definitely recommend to uh, go and watch that. So, so basically, you know, I created a spreadsheet in last, you know, five days, I spent a lot of time creating this spreadsheet in which I have the name of the university, what program does the university offer, the tuition cost of it, uh, the length of the program, and then what is the acceptance rate and uh, whether GRE or GMAT is required or not, TOEFL and IELTS are required or not, and many other information. So without any delay, let me share this spreadsheet. Um, okay let me share the spreadsheet with you all okay so i hope you can see this spreadsheet um okay so let me zoom in a little bit okay so so the thing is okay so let me you know give a quick walkthrough of what this uh, spreadsheet is all about it contains the name of the universities the name of the program right and then what is the tuition cost the length of the length of the program the acceptance rate my suggestion you know based on what do i think if it's a safe university ambitious university or a moderate university similarly if gre and gmat is required or not TOEFL or IELTS is required or not what is the status have they started up uh, uh, have they started uh, you know accepting the application or not and then when is the start date of their cohort and the specific link of each program so uh, so one thing is uh, I spent a lot of time creating this. So if in case you give me 50 comments on the YouTube, I'll make sure I upload this spreadsheet on, on my description box of my YouTube channel. But the thing is you need to give me 50 comments on my YouTube, on my YouTube video. Okay. So, you know, let's, let's discuss, you know, what the, what these uh, universities are, what kind of program do they offer and, you know, the tuition cost. So what I feel is uh, there are a lot of good universities. If you see, uh let me yeah zoom zoom out a little bit yeah so so if you see right i mean uh there are so many good universities that offer this master's program in quant finance in uk now you know you'll see different uh different names right mathematics and finance mathematics and computational finance financial risk management quantitative finance mathematical finance so i did went to different uh, you know all the curriculum of these universities more or less i felt like they are teaching the same thing it's just one one subject or two subject here or there but otherwise i genuinely felt like they all are teaching the same thing it's just that they have chosen different names but again kind of you know yeah let's say if, if you see university of oxford uh mathematical and computational finance they have some certain subjects towards you know computer computational side and that's why they have uh named their subject as mathematical and computational but irrespective you know if you study from these university officially you'll become a quant right i mean that's that's a good part so you know like if you see my suggestion based on ambitious how do i how have i rate ambitious see this is of course you know like uh i spoke to a few students and then i also went to i did a lot of digging online you know what is the acceptance rate of all these universities what is the reputation of all these universities how from how long did are they offering uh this masters in uh, quantitative finance because it is very important for all of you to understand that if a if a curriculum or if a program is very new that is the you know that is when they are uh, the university is not experienced i genuinely feel that you should always go to those university who are running such program from a from a really long time why is that the case because they know like what the industry wants so so definitely you know i feel like all the top universities that i have mentioned are ambitious universities of course uh, you know uh, depends you know this ambitious moderate and safe depends on what kind of profile you have uh, basically you know, you know what uh, so when i was re reading the prerequisite that's where i realized they want people who come from bachelors uh, in mathematics or statistics or computing you know program uh, computer science so if in case let's say you ha you are from a bcom if you are a bcom student there are there are you know certain workarounds and you can message me you know on youtube or best ways to message me on linkedin and i'll tell you those workarounds you know what you if you are a become student how can you get certain uh certain 
uh, credits for mathematical course because these are this is what they are these guys are looking for so make sure uh, if you have done any mathematics subject statistics subject uh, programming subject make sure to highlight those in your resume and those in your sop also see uh, i feel like more or less uh, the tuition cost uh, you know like if you see all the ambitious university the tuition cost is between $40,000 to $47,000 and i i feel that they are charging a little premium a little high because of the name that they have you know because these are popular universities students do go to these universities see irrespective uh, you know the the course curriculum is just the same you know but why do they uh, why do they charge extra is because of the cohort see always remember that the cohort is very important for for any any masters uh, any masters program uh, i remember back in nc state i had people from uh, there were people from iits uh, you know who who graduated from iit uh, i had people from iims nits so you know all so the best thing about going into ambitious colleges or going into top notch colleges is the crowd you learn a lot from the crowd okay and that's why i feel like you should definitely aim for top notch universities uh, so these are the tuition costs you know i feel like if you see most of the moderate university they are charging close to you know 30 35000 and if you see the ambitious university they again you know it again drops to you know 25 30 you know 25 30000 um so so this is all about you know the tuition cost i feel like a lot of students you know think whether should i pursue my masters from india or pursue my masters in from uk you know i genuinely feel that for con finance there are not many programs in india and even if they are programs they are not very you know they are not not like they are they are not like the best of the, the best so i would i highly suggest you know uk then becomes a better option I mean, USA is the best. The second best is UK because uh, they offer, you know, good, good uh, master's degree. And of course, uh, you learn a lot in this one year. I guess in uh, one year is a good amount of time to learn different concepts of quantitative finance. So if you have if you have the financial budget, definitely, I mean, uh, UK is better uh, as compared to India. But if your budget is little high, I would highly recommend pursue your masters in united states because uh, because the job opportunities in usa is much much higher than job opportunities in uk in uk and also i feel like the uk economy i'm not sure but that's what i always hear her hear from my friends that it's not doing good and uh, getting a job it's so tough so challenging so i mean if you have a little you know if you can afford i would highly suggest come to us pursue your masters in quant finance because a lot of job opportunities out here so as i said most of the program has one year you know one year uh, timeline so in this one year they'll be teaching you different concepts of quant finance also the only exception is university of york they offer this mathematical finance masters but it's a online complete online masters uh, and even the acceptance rate is pretty high i'm very sure if you apply you will get into it but again you know uh, uh, it's like a online degree so i'm not sure you know online i'm not a big fan of online degrees because when you come in in an offline setting you know when you sit with your batchmates that's where the learning happens so i would highly suggest you know apply for universities which offer you all the rest of the universities if you see they offer on offline program only this offers online and but the good part is the length is, is high higher you know so you don't need to just rush in one year you can take your own time and you know uh, pursue the degree but again i mean i would always suggest that if you are doing your masters aim like the top-notch university that should be your aim again i've written the acceptance rate the acceptance rates are from google uh some sometimes the university themselves have written like uh like i was reading uh one uh, i guess few universities they have written one out of five uh applicants get accepted or one two out of seven applicants get uh, accepted so like that uh, i saw some some universities mentioning that and uh rest of the acceptance rate comes from uh different uh different uh platforms so i hope um you know this is this for you you know letting you know like the acceptance rate of ambitious universities versus you know moderate universities so uh, one thing which i realized is most of the program do not uh, require GR, uh, gre and gman only only base uh, so if you see we have three lists three colleges of base business school city right university of london so these so this college specifically required uh, gman 
i would highly recommend just check it that's what i have read um you know i checked it multiple times but so what they have done is they have not mentioned it in the in these in the courses but what they have done is they have just you know mentioned in their website that if you are coming from a master's gmat is required so i would highly suggest like if if in case you know you can basically either reach out to these you know admission committee or they have a email mentioned in their website so you can either reach out to them and ask whether gmat is required otherwise TOEFL and uh, I am sure like TOEFL uh, if you see TOEFL or IELTS you can aim for any one exam I, I feel IELTS is easy as compared to TOEFL so if you so make sure you get a band of 7.5 uh, you know that's where most I saw most of the ambitious university asking for also I saw like in the safe universities band of six was also you know they were flexible and they said if you have a IELTS, uh, IELTS of uh, six score six band uh you you know you are more than welcome so uh but again i would say like uh, uh make sure you get like a good ielts score so that uh, you can get into top notch universities as i said gre is not gmat gre is not required except for base but yeah tofil is required uh, most of them they have started app, uh, they have started accepting the application so make sure uh, make sure you start applying as soon as possible and if you see this london uh, london lse london school of uh, sorry london school of economics and political science so these two and these two which is base so they have their rolling application so uh, rolling application basically means that uh as soon as you apply you will get the result so if you see that is very different i mean of course rolling doesn't mean as soon as but of course they take some time and you know uh they will uh, roll out the results but some university how how they follow is uh so they'll accept uh, they'll accept and then on, on a given date they'll release all the results so it depends which university you know wants to release the results in which way but if you see most of the cohort most of the cohort Uh, for their master's degree starts in September 25. So you, so make sure like, you know, uh, you apply, you apply as soon as possible. And also if in case uh, you need any help for your, uh, for your application, you can reach out to me on LinkedIn. I have, uh, you know, I do help a lot of students understanding, you know, how can you build your resume? What kind of quant related projects are, uh you can include in your resume and what how should you prepare your sop i do guide a lot of students so if in case you need my help there you can reach out to me on linkedin but i would highly suggest like you know make sure you submit your application as soon as possible but a uh, few few points i would say is uh, i see a lot of indian students doing this mistake that they build their resume two to three page all over you know in abroad if you see usa uk canada people just follow a one page resume you know uh, and it is not like a very fancy resume they have a format which you should, which they follow so make sure you follow those resume format do not just you know i was seeing i was reviewing one resume and they were like you know leaves and uh, plants coming in and it was it, it looked like more like a wedding card rather than a, rather than a you know resume so i feel don't do that mistake these are professional documents so make sure you give your best okay and again if you if you i have just you know highlighted the links if you see most of the uh, you know if you see uh, imperial college oxford ucl you know and all the universities i have mentioned here so if in case uh, you need the spreadsheet make sure you give me 50 plus comments and i'll upload the spreadsheet in the description uh, and i wish you all the best uh, for uh, pursuing your masters uh, in quant finance and from uk if you have any other doubt please put it in the comment box and i'll try my level best to reply to you so all the best guys